It is my great pleasure to speak about fire safety and fire, commu uh, fire computing. Today I will do it through my personal journey from finding my own field of research to the challenges of maintaining the internal fire of researcher. Our society has learned to deal with fire risks through the major incidents such as the Great Fire of London in the 17th century or our Finnish counterpart, the fire in Turku in 1827. In fact, I have never met a person that would say that fire safety is not important. But the need for the continuous research in such a kind of traditional field is not self-evident. I hope that during this talk you will find some reasons why we still need fire engineering research hundreds of years after the first steps of fire protection engineering. When I was a teenager, I, I was a member of a local voluntary fire brigade. It was super meaningful experience to me because it provided a sense of community. It, it provided a feeling of being important through being able to help others with the skills that I had trained for. So when I came to university to study physics, I felt a bit sorry because I, I thought that this important hobby was now in my past. Maybe it was by accident or somehow during the third years of, of studies, I noticed that there's a course about fire dynamics at the civil engineering department. I went to the first lecture and it was a revelation to me. Suddenly I realized that there's an engineering discipline devoted for the fire safety that I liked. And behind that discipline, there was an entire field of science. So I became a researcher uh, in fire safety engineering. Fire safety engineering means uh, the use of uh, engineering uh, methods, science-based, to protect people, animals, property, environment, and cultural values. Through the adoption of performance-based fire regulations in the most countries of the world, the focus of the discipline has shifted from mainly experimental testing of materials and structures to the computer simulation and, and, and uh, uh, risk analysis. So I started to do computational fluid dynamic simulations of fire, and in the end of 90s, they looked something like the image on the left. It's a picture of temperature field from a gas burner flame. Quite nice, but in many cases wrong. Uh, the reason for the inaccuracy was in, in the method that we used to model turbulent flow. It was the time averaged uh, or Reynolds average modeling of turbulence. This method was soon replaced by something called large eddy simulation where the main point is that we can actually calculate the large vortices that you see in the right-hand picture that are responsible for the most of the mass and energy transfer in fire plumes. So I became uh, a member of the development team for one of the software's fire dynamic simulator. Uh, in in few years after its release, this software became the most popular among the engineers and during the last 15 years, it has maybe more than 90% of all the fire calculations in the world have been done using this code. Uh, today, the simulations are of course getting closer and closer to reality. On the left, we see a photograph from an experiment where a about one meter gas burner heats up a steel beam right above it. On the right, we see a computer simulation of the same event due 
to the better physical submodels and increase in computer power, we are reaching the reality in the simulations. One power of fire computing was the capability to integrate different subdisciplines. For instance, coupled simulations of smoke transfer and people evacuation brought the concepts of human behavior, decision making theories, and social aspects of our, our being to the hands of everyday engineering. This animation shows an agent based simulation of evacuation process where the agents have to decide when they turn back from a exit route that has been blocked by smoke and after that they must choose between two identical exits. So everything was fine, engineers were happy, but a motivational crisis followed. If everything is so good what is the next big challenge? What to strive for? And I think it wasn't just me, but it was the most of the engineering and researcher community in the Western countries that had the same crisis. We had to reorient ourselves. What is our position in the research and engineering community? As a code developer, we of course have a numerous, numerous academic problems to solve. For instance, the most difficult and important challenge of fire computing through the years has been an attempt to predict how big the fire actually is. Not to prescribe it, but to predict. Taking a liquid pool fire as an example here, the problem of predicting how much it actually burns can be simplified to predicting how much thermal radiation hits the surface of the pool, then calculating how the radiation penetrates the pool, heats it up, evaporates the pool, and we have a feedback loop. Technically, doing that radiation calculation inside the pool is not so difficult if we know the absorption coefficient uh, at different wavelengths. But to calculate the evolution of the spectrum of electromagnetic radiation with that accuracy would be way too expensive for engineering code. It's only during the last year here at Aalto when we have managed to develop methods that are accurate and computationally efficient so that we can integrate them in as a part for engineering tool for the practitioners to use. Another application, more demanding class of materials, is, is the solid fuel. I think everybody of us who have ever been sitting on the campfire or watching a burning log in a fireplace, we know that there is this distinct pattern of cracks on the surface of a burning wood. But why do these cracks appear? And why is the pattern different in the different directions, in the directions along the wood grain or perpendicular? And if we know why they are formed, can we somehow prevent them from appearing? That would make the wood, wooden structures more fire resistant in the future. And not just uh, uh, doing what we used to do, but combining the pyrolysis model, pyrolysis modeling with the competencies of our fellow researchers, such as computational mechanics or solid mechanics, microstructure of wood cells, and even reactive molecular dynamics, they will tell and teach us in the future uh, to understand the physics of thermal degradation of polymeric materials. Okay, these were two academic problems, but even in our everyday life, we shouldn't take fire safety for granted. The, uh, the society that we, where we live in is changing. In the president's talk, we heard about these mega trends, major challenges, and one of them is the energy efficiency. 
true the high optimization of our buildings to be energy efficient, we have made them so airtight that we have created a new fire problem. I must admit that for 20 years I did fire research without paying any attention to the pressure inside a burning apartment. Then this happened. Okay. By making our apartments so airtight, we have created a situation that a person, you or me, we cannot escape the burning apartment in the early phases of the uh, fire. These kind of videos are important for convincing people, but they are not enough for decision making. So we took the models that we had developed, we validated them, used them to extrapolate for different buildings from different ages, for di buildings with different ventilation systems, and we were able to show that for fast developing fires, basically all the modern buildings are so airtight that there is a high risk of not being able to escape. This conclusion led to the banning of inwards opening doors in the Finnish apartment, apartment buildings from the beginning of last year. Okay, we had the tools. We had learned something. 9th of December 2016 in Vuosaari, Helsinki, a fire took place in the middle of the night. Mother of the family woke up found the fire, went for a moment to the staircase, returned to her home to wake up the three children. These four people never escape. And why is that? Because we were too late. One theory supported by the on-site observations is that the pressure was too high for them to escape the, escape the apartment. They are not telling, but we believe so. My fear as a researcher is that we are too keen on finding the latest trends, lati latest scientific uh, breakthroughs, so that we are not paying attention what is the holistic view of the trends. Are we brave enough to be critical? Uh, are we ready to stay to say, hey, stop for a moment. Let's not make our society dangerous again. Let's not forget what we learned hundreds of years ago. Aalto University is a community where people from different backgrounds can come together to work for a better future. I hope that fire safety will be among the attributes of better future. When you teach and when you do research, keep in mind that we have learned something. We don't, uh, should not focus on a single objective, a single thing to optimize. It was a great pleasure to share this uh, message. Have a nice afternoon.